Good morning, welcome back to Catch a Sailing. So today we're going fishing, but not the normal kind of fishing because we're going fishing in the mast for a halyard. Well, that's at least the plan anyway. Why not consider being one of our patrons? And don't forget you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. So what are we doing today then? So I'm going up the mast today, yay! <laughs> Kenny's scared of heights, so I have to go and sit in the bosun chair while him and Jeff uh, winch me up. Uh, it's a bit windy, so I might blow away. Don't know what I'm doing up there. I've got a nail and I've got a bit of fishing line. I've got to thread it somewhere. I don't know. Kenny will explain what I need to do later on. So hopefully I won't die and fall to my death. See you later. <laughs> so what it is that Craig's doing is he's going to go up the mast for me, which is very nice. And um, yeah, it's because I don't like heights. Not for me. Anyway. Can't uh, even go over a bridge. <laughs> I can, just in the middle of the bridge. It's fine. Anyway, so Craig's going to go up the mast and he's got some fishing line with a nail on it. I read this idea, so hopefully it works. And if it does, we'll, we'll, we'll share that idea with you. Um, the idea is to use the fishing line with a bit of nail and stick it through the top of the sheave where the mast, uh, where the hallied should come out of the mast, because we've already got the, uh, the hole in the mast for it. And then drop that all the way down to the bottom and hopefully the weight of the nail will come out lovely just where I need to pinch it out of the mast at, at the exit point. That's what's meant to happen, but uh, anything could happen to be honest. Um, we'll see. I need to go to the Shanders now because we need to get some rope because I haven't got any rope for it. And hopefully my measurements will work. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. As I was saying earlier, that's where the uh, spinnaker lift needs to come out of the mast, out of that hole there. And then right up at the top of the mast where Craig's gonna go, that's where the, uh, the line's gonna go in. That's where we're gonna go fishing for halyards, hopefully. Um, while we're here as well, just so we're here, please hit that subscribe button down there because it really helps us out. It encourages us to keep making these videos. And also you might have noticed that we've got these fantastic new t-shirts on as well. And if you want to get your hands on one of these, then head on to, over to our patron page where you can be a, a patron of ours and you can get some lots of free goodies as well for just being a patron. Anyway, let's crack on. You call me a saint bird, you know I'm a stranger A willing and able to do what you want You think I'm a thinker, but I'm just a singer All busy and pretty, just making believe Boy, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling Down to obscurity, don't let me ever be this alone I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling, I'm falling how was the mast? Um, silver and vertical and quite high. <laughs> Fun though, I like it. Very windy up there. When you get to the top, you really feel the wind blowing your toupee. It's quite nice. <laughs> so plan A has failed. Um, because I can't find where it should go into in the mast because in my, in my head I'm thinking it's got to come out below where the genoa is because of where the pole's going to sit on the boat it can't really come out the top of the mast because then it would sit outside the genoa which wouldn't make sense not in my head unless I'm getting that completely wrong and then you can tell me down in the comments below that we're doing it completely wrong so what we're going to do is there is the inner force day um, and there is a hoop up there as well and a strong point so I think as a temporary measure unless we can figure anything else out while we're up there I'm going to stick a block on there and then feed it external to the mast so I think that's the plan B at the minute so we're going to do that just so at least we've got a, um, a spinnaker topping lift but if you can think of any other way that that's going to come out there because there is the exit hole in the mast so it's got, to, it's got to come out there somewhere I just I can't really see well Craig can't see where it is because I ain't going up there <laughs> well, that's what I thought when you said we need to go back up there again. <laughs> Very much the royal we. Yeah, Craig's going up there, not me. <laughs> anyway, so we need to go to the Shandri and get some rope, I think. Um, but if we do manage to find another way of doing it, then we can reuse this rope anyway. So I'm not too worried about that. So off to the Shandri we go. So take two of um, spinnaker pole uplift. And... Spinnaker pole? Yes, yeah. yeah. I'm going back up the mast for the third time today. <laughs> you like it really? I do like it actually. Kenny, do all the work. I need you to climb a little bit. <laughs> I need to get up to the sail back first. Hang on. Don't let me ever be 
to get a block just underneath the force uh, the Genoa and that's on the inner force day and then we're just going to tie it off onto that wonderful d-ring there where the spinnaker goes but I'm still confused as to where that, that hole there where that goes then it must go to the top of the mast or something but we can't really see anything obvious up there so maybe maybe do they stick the things like the spinnaker lift in that and the mast as a standard on kind of Bavaria boats and maybe you have to pay extra for the sheaves in the top? Don't know. So if, if anybody knows that, it'd be great if you could let me know in the comments. Um, so all we're going to do now is we're just going to tidy our ropes up and uh, that'll be it for the pole, I think. One other thing I want to do is I want to stick some... Uh, some extra road on our anchor chain so I've got some 14 uh, mil octo plate and I'm gonna put this onto our chain so I mean we've got 53 meters I think in there in the locker and um, I, want to, I want a bit more scope than that especially if we're anchoring in deeper water so you know if you're in 10 meters you've only really got five to one there um, and it's probably not adequate if it's really windy so I want to get some extra road on there as well so we can put uh, a decent scope out if we want to stay overnight so that's the plan and that's what I'm gonna do now Splice this onto the end of that, and then hopefully I'm going to keep this um, road nicely, nicely tucked in there or something, so it keeps it doesn't it's not full of water and then it um, rots the chain basically. So that's what I'm going to try and do now. Try and do a bit of splicing. Right, so I've just split the uh, the end of the octo plate, and I've done a bit of whipping up there. So I'm just going to unravel that right down to there. And all I've done there is I've just marked the end so I know which which uh, strand I need to plait between the um, the chain. I wish I had some coloured tape, but I haven't, so I'm just using some tie wraps. Right, so this is by no means a guide on how to do this. So this is my first attempt at uh, splicing octo plate to a chain. But as far as I understand, you have to identify what your clockwise ones are and what your anti-clockwise ones are um, before you can start flattening it because I think they go in a different pattern. Um, so that's all I'm going to be doing. Um, because what I want to do is I want to get it so the octo plate goes or plaits all the way up the chain because then when it's going through the windlass, it should. You, it should draw the, the road in as well so it should be able to use this road on our windlass as well that's hopefully what we're going to try and do anyway so we'll see you need to be a wizard luckily I studied at Hogwarts <laughs> so we're all good um, now, all of you at home might be watching this and going, what the hell is he doing? If there's a better way, please let us know. So we've done that, 
So we've, what we've basically done is use this, what do you call this? Octo... Octo thing. That. Um, and we've had to weave it in and out of all this chain to basically give us more road. Yeah, more anchor road. More anchor road. Um, and it's a bit tricky because the instructions we were following were in Japanese. They weren't, but they might as well have been. Um, but that's what we've, we've got. We've got. Can you see that? Yeah. Um, I have a big question about those ends though. If we just have a look at those ends there, it says to um, cut them off and then basically just uh, see at the ends and whatever. But so, yeah, so the instructions we were following says to put standard electrical tape around them and then sear the ends off with super glue. We're not convinced that that's going to hold, so. I don't know. Thoughts, please. Yeah, <laughs> thoughts below, please. Um, if you see us drifting around the world and the anchor's left behind, then you know why. <laughs> nice, we finally connected the uh, the anchor road to the chain, so that was a, a platting nightmare. A bit of a dark art, I think. Um, not my cup of tea. I'm, I'm fine with doing this stuff, so uh, this, this braided, braided rope we've got on a mooring lines, I'm more than happy doing that stuff um, and splicing those. More than happy doing a loop on those, but that stuff is a bit, a bit tricky, if I'm honest. But we've got 30 metres of that now, just tucked in the front of the locker in here. And uh, then we've got 50 metres of chain, so that gives us uh, about 80 metres in total. So I think that's enough for most situations, to be honest. Um, and because it's at the front of the locker, it's not going to get wet. So hopefully that'll be better. No, hopefully that'll be, uh, hopefully that'll save the chain a bit longer, I suppose, so it don't start rotting. Okay, and the last thing I've been doing today is I've been, um, it's only a temporary fit, so I've not been installing it at all. But one of the problems we got on this boat is we've only got a 50 watt solar panel here. So if we're anchoring out and these kind of things, it's not enough to run a fridge. Um, it's barely enough to run basically nav equipment and only nav equipment as well. So I managed to get this 200 watt panel here and it's just a foldable um, thing. But it has got these little eyelets here. That means I can basically tie it down um, anywhere on deck as well. And I think this is roughly a nice temporary installation for it because I can still get access to the lines and everything else. So I'm thinking about trialing this the next time we're out just to see how much power we can get out of this thing. Now I quickly just hooked it up here and I know it's not particularly in the right angle or anything like that, um, but I am getting about uh, three amps out of that and that's on an overcast day uh, with a fairly lot of shadows on the boat, especially over on the, the starboard side as well. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's better than the half an amp I roughly get out of that, but it's, um, it's definitely enough to run the fridge at least now anyway, so it'll be a bit better life on anchor I think. And don't forget, if you've not already subscribed, then hit that button down there because we release videos a bit ad, ad hoc, to be honest. So if you want to get notified, make sure you hit that subscribe. And it really helps us out as well. It, keeps us, uh, it gives us the motivation to make more videos so you can watch them. But until next time, bye-bye.